this is MJ. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe and tap the bell so you can stay updated on new videos and tutorials. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this quick and easy button up slipper sock. The size that I'm working on today is a size eight, but in the PDF pattern, there is sizing from a size five all the way to size 12. So I haven't added these to this slipper yet, but I'll be showing you how to add on some suede bottoms just to help the durability of your slipper. So I'll be using an eight millimeter crochet hook in this tutorial, and this is a hook neck crochet hook, and there will be links for that in the description box. I'll be using Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick to make these slippers. For our size eight, we will need two balls. Each slipper uses approximately one ball. So if you're following along with the pattern, a size five to a size eight, you would just need two balls. But once you go over this size, I would suggest purchasing an additional ball for the larger sizes. So these are the bottoms that we're going to attach. So we have two larger for the toe section and then for the heel section smaller and you can purchase these from we crochet and i'll have the links in the description box the buttons that i'm using these buttons here are 32 millimeter size i also have some 35 millimeter size you just want to be able to fit the button through the stitch holes of the slipper and also have a couple yarn needles on hand for bulky yarn for weaving in those ends now with a slipper gauge is pretty important for the correct fit. So what I did is I just measured a section of my foot here. You could do a small swatch of extended single crochet to double check, but I have four stitches and four rows in two inches. I took only a two inch section because of the slipper. It's a little bit harder. So four stitches and four rows. So you wanna make sure that you adjust your hook according to make sure that you meet the pattern gauge. So we'll be starting out with a magic ring or a magic circle. I'm gonna wrap the yarn around my index finger three times. I'm gonna take the hook, sliding it all the way through. So we're starting from the toe up. Pull the first loop through and chain two. We'll work eight half double crochets in the ring. So now once you have your eight stitches, I just like to pull my work out of the way so I can see these loops. You're gonna take your tail and you're gonna pull it. You're gonna see one loop starts pulling in and the other one is still popped out. So take the loop that's pulled in, you can give it a tug, it's gonna pull that other loop tight and then you can just take your tail again and pull and then now we have a nice tight circle to start our sock. So I'm gonna go under that first, the two loops there of the first stitch and I'm gonna slip stitch that to join. And now we'll chain one. Work two single crochet in every stitch around. So you can just continue working that around. Now both left and right, the very tip of the toe here both begin the same way. Once we get to round four is when things will change up. Okay, so I finished working around two single crochet in every stitch. So I have a total of 16 stitches and you do wanna count that to confirm. You don't wanna move ahead with the wrong stitch count because even one stitch with bulky yarn like this can make a difference. So slip stitch to join, chain one, and round three, we're just gonna work one single crochet in every stitch around. So for a total of 16 stitches. Okay, so I finished working around 16 stitches. I'm gonna slip stitch in the top of our first single crochet to join. 
So now I have two made because we're gonna have our left and our right. And I'm gonna kind of work through them as we go. Now this section of the pattern, you could potentially do the toe the same for both sizes. But because I'm just being extra picky and fiddly, here's the join really does blend in really, really well. But how I've designed the pattern is that that join here on the toe section will be to the inside. So that's not going to be seen. So our outside has our button up and there's no join. So that's why I have the left and the right so that that join here is on the inside. And I'm just going to look at my notes to make sure I tell you the right for each. Okay, so let's start off with the right foot. So the right foot now, we're going to be starting into our extended single crochet pattern. So we'll chain one and we're going to work an extended single crochet in the first two. So to work an extended single crochet, we go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And we'll do that again in the next stitch. And now the next four stitches, we're gonna work around the posts because we're starting our post pattern. So there's one front post double crochet. Let me go through that slowly. So we're yarning over, you're going around the post of the stitch. So under and up, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're doing another one, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And one more. So the post pattern is just four posts. And now in the next 12, we're gonna work extended single crochets. So one, two, we're working over 10 extended single crochet, not 12. So because we want a total of 16 stitches, so we start with two, four, and then 10. So we're ending here with our 10th extended single crochet, slip stitch in the top of our first extended single crochet to join, chain one. And now that that pattern is established, we're just working repeat rounds. So it's really simple. So we're doing extended single crochet in the first, extended single crochet in the next, and then our posts are now established, so they're gonna be easier to work into. So a front post, double crochet, into the next four. Okay, and then an extended single crochet in each of the next 10. So this is the right foot. This is how we're gonna work the right foot toe. So I am gonna switch over. I'm gonna finish this round and then I'm gonna switch over and show you the difference with the left. Now let's take a look at the start of our left. So the first three rounds are the same. But now the only difference is instead of starting with just two extended single crochet, we're going to start with 10 and end with two. So it's really just a flip of what we did on the other sock. So we'll chain one, work an extended single crochet in each of the next 10. Okay, so then in the next four, we're going to do, after we've done 10, we're going to do the front post doubles. Like I say, the first round's always a little harder to get around the post because we're doing a, it around a single crochet post. Okay. 
And then you should just have two stitches remaining and we're working an extended in that final two. And then we just keep now repeating these rounds. So once we start into the extended single crochet pattern, I'm looking at a total of 11 rounds. So if we count the first three, 11, 12, 13, 14 rounds in total is what you need to have before we jump into the next section. Okay, so the next part of the slipper is gonna be the heel. So let's just work up the toe. I'm gonna to work it up um, for both my left and right. I'm gonna complete that and then I'm gonna come back. The heel part is worked the same way. So I'm gonna come back and we're gonna work the heel together. Okay, so I've worked up both my slippers. Now I've ended up only working a total of 10 rounds, so 13 in total. For some reason, this color is working up a little bit bulkier than the other yarn I used. Let me just show you. So this was the other color that I had picked and I worked 11 rounds and I had seven inches. This time, you can see here I have seven inches and I've only worked 10 of the extended and then my three for the toe. So what I have put in the pattern is also the inches that you're gonna need. So if for some reason, the color, there's a bit of a discrepancy between colors or it's working up a bit bulkier. Now I really made sure that I crocheted these tight as well. I did keep it fairly tight. And if you need to even go down a hook size, you might need to do that. But I was purposely trying to keep my stitches tight throughout this. So for a size eight, you're looking at about seven inches. Now, the other thing you can do is put it on your foot. So I'm gonna pop up a picture just showing what I like to do as I go with slippers or socks. So you just wanna pull it on your foot and then see how the fit is kind of coming up to your ankle area here. So if it's too big, you might wanna pull back around. If it's a little short, you might wanna do another round. So that's a good way just to fit as you go but you can also go by those measurements in the pattern as well. So first off, how about we take a look at the right foot? So the right foot, if we go back here, the right foot has our two and then we go into our front posts. So what we're gonna do is chain one. We wanna work our heel, which needs to be here. So rather than fastening off or anything, all we're gonna do is turn. So we're gonna work back across eight stitches. I want these two stitches, these two stitches, and the four stitches, so eight on this side. So you're basically splitting the slipper in half. So we're not gonna work into these eight, we're gonna work into the eight at the back here. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've turned, we're gonna work an extended single crochet each of the next eight. So we're really working this now on the wrong side for our right sock. Okay, so I've done eight. I just wanna make sure I've got two stitches before the post, which I do. We're gonna chain one and turn. Okay, so now we're just gonna work back in the eight stitches, extended single crochets. So one, Okay, so there's eight, and then we'll just chain one and turn. 
and I want you to make a total of two more rows. So we're going to have four rows at eight stitches for the heel. So I have my four rows. Now what we're going to do is right sides facing. So this is the right side. We're going to fold the heel right sides facing. I'm going to chain one. We're going to slip stitch this heel together. one two three four okay so there that is and then we're just going to fasten off here we can weave in that end and that section is complete so we can just pop that so that makes our heel and you can try that on at this point. I'm just going to take the yarn needle for bulky yarn here and I'm just going to get this end out of the way. And just make sure that you really secure this good. That can get trimmed and you can also get your starting end dealt with as well so you don't forget about it and I'll just trim those so that section of the right slipper is complete. So let me just show you the difference we're gonna be here with the left. So with the right, we had to turn to the wrong side to work across the eight stitches, but for our left, we're already set up to just work across because we have two stitches here, we have our four, and then we just won't work into those two. So working extended single crochets as well, we're going to work over eight stitches. So I've worked eight and you want to make sure that you have two stitches here before the posts to make sure that you've worked them correctly. We'll chain one in turn, work back across eight. So we want again a total of four rows with eight stitches and then we'll slip stitch it together and we have both left and right slipper completed and then we're going to move on to the leg portion and each slipper will be worked a little bit differently um, through that section as well but I'm just going to work the rest of my two rows here off camera and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so what I'm gonna do again, I finished my four rows. I just fold right sides together. Let me chain one, it just gets me in position here. So chain one and I'm just gonna slip stitch through each stitch, so four again. One, two, three and four. I'm just going to fasten that off and weave those ends in like I already showed you and then I'll meet you back up again. Okay, so what you want is the toe facing. So this is the right slipper. We've got our join here. The toe is facing. Now what we're going to do is join from, so we're going to go to the left from the post. So how I have it written from the post, you're going to to the left. This is going to the left. We're going to join into the third stitch. So one, two, three. Okay, so we're joining in right here. I'm going to chain one. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to work extended single crochets. So from here 
all the way over to this post before this post we want to work in 12 extended so you have to kind of evenly space those as you go so just count but we want that we have 12. it should naturally work out but if it doesn't you want to go back and just make sure so in that first space we're going to do one two Twelve. Okay, so we've gotten around the 12 stitches and then we're going to work the four posts, front post doubles, so one, two, three, Four. and then you should be ending with two extended one two and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain three and the reason we're chaining three is because we want that flap over part so one two three so in total for this round, you should have 18 stitches plus your three chains. And now what we're gonna do is turn, and in the second chain from the hook, so one, two, we're gonna work an extended single crochet. We're gonna work an extended single crochet into the next chain. and then an extended into the next two. One, two. So now if you can remember on this side of our posts, we're gonna have four instead of two now. So we're going from 18 to 20 stitches all the way around. Now we're gonna have to do our posts, but because we're on the wrong side now, we need to do back post double crochets rather than front post. So to do the back post, you're going to yarn over. Just a second, I'm going to move my desk up a bit. Okay, so to do our back post, we're going to yarn over. You're going to come down. If you want to yarn over, get the yarn kind of out of the way. You're going around the post this way now. So we're just going under it. You need to grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So again, we're yarning over going down under the post, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. So they're a little bit more fiddly, but it's still a fairly simple stitch to create. Okay, so we've gotten across, so we've worked the posts. So we have 12 that we have to work through so just count as you go to make sure you don't miss any. So go around 12 extended single crochets. And then when you get all the way around, we're gonna chain one and turn, and we're gonna go back. And now we're to the right side, so this will be a little bit easier, but work around 12 extended single crochet and then I'll meet you up and when we get to the posts we're going to work front posts now so one front post in each of the next four and then we just finish off with four, with a, an extended single crochet in the last four stitches then we'll chain one and turn, work four extended single crochet. There we 
here's three, four, and then we just work the back posts again across the next four, work extended, and then we're just going back and forth in this pattern until you get the height really you desire. I've worked that I use most of the ball to get it up. You just need to make sure you have some left for edging and sewing on your buttons, but it really at this point, you can make it as long as you want. If you wanted to even use an extra ball, you could make it even higher. I can make it a higher boot. It's really up to you. So for my original boot, I worked about 12 rounds before the edging. And I'm hoping that that works out with this one as well. But because I was off on the toe, I may need to do less. So I'll just work through and I'll let you know how it works out with this yarn. But the pattern does state to do 12 rounds in total. So we'll see if I'm able to make uh, make it and have enough yarn left over to do my 12 rounds. So now let's take a look at the left boot here. Okay, so this one's going to be done a little bit different. I still want you to have your toe facing. This time we're going to be joining on to the right side, not the left side. So this one this time it's going to be a little bit different in that we need to start out with our chain. So if you recall with the right boot, we end with a chain three. This time we're starting with a chain two because we don't need to do that turn and work back into it. We just need to do the chain two. So we're going to do the chain two and then we're going to join right in to the second stitch from the right. So if you're looking at the toe from the post, second stitch from the post here is where we're joining and I'm going to join right in with an extended single crochet. I'm going to get right into the stitch. Then we'll work an extended single crochet into the next. So now you can see this overlap bit again on this side we will end up with the four stitches on this side of the post. So we're evened up with the other slipper. So now we'll work front post, four front post doubles. Okay, and we, we need to work around this area, like on the other slipper, 12 extended singles. So we have two and then basically 10 all around the heel edging. And you just wanna evenly space them again and it should naturally work out, but if it doesn't pull back and just adjust to make sure that you get 12 in total. Okay, so I've worked 12 and then we're going to chain one and turn and go back. Now we're on the wrong side. We're going to go back, work the 12 and then I'll meet you up again. So I've worked 12. Now we're to the post and we need to work across four back post double crochets. So I'll work them across already worked through that stitch slow so I'm just going to go ahead and work them and then we do an extended in the next stitch and the next stitch and then we're coming to that chain so you should have two chains there and we're going to work an extended single crochet in the next and in the next. Okay, and then chain one and turn back to the right side. So see now we have the, the fold over piece on the side that doesn't have the join or joins in the side. So the joins are both on the inside 
and the flap on the outside. So now you work just back and forth. We have four extended on one side of the posts and 12 extended on the other side of the posts. And you're just working. <clears throat> like I say, a total of, if you can get 12 with enough yarn left over, if you need to reduce that down, that's okay too. I'm hoping I can get the 12 rounds because I like ending on an even number for how the rest of the pattern goes. So let's hope that with this yarn, we can get all of those rounds. So I'm not gonna work through all this part with you now. We're just going back and forth in rows. So I'll work each of my boots now, my slipper, my slipper boots off camera. And then I will meet you back up again for the edging. Okay, so this is our right boot and I still have this much left and I actually ended up doing 14 rounds. So it's really gonna be hit and miss, I guess, from ball to ball. So just work up what you can <clears throat> is what I'm gonna suggest. Just make sure you're ending on an even number. So then when you chain one and turn, you're gonna be on the right side to finish this edging. So if you count, our flap over piece actually starts on the second round. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now what we'll do is we'll work single crochets in every stitch across. So chain one and we'll work across a single crochet in every stitch. Okay, so we've worked single crochets all the way across. I've worked 19 and I'm coming to my 20th stitch right here, but in that final stitch, I'm gonna add three and that's just gonna give us a nice corner because now we're gonna work down around all the edges. So just evenly space single crochet stitches down your edging. And when you get to the bottom, you're gonna do three again in this corner. So one, two, three. It doesn't really specifically matter how many stitches you have. You just want it to be nice and even so that this isn't wobbling or pulling too tight. You just wanna make them nice and even. Then we're just gonna keep going. Just work around. Just evenly spacing stitches. So there's three. Okay, we're just gonna work all the way up to the top. Now I'm getting to the last space here and I'm gonna add two because this starting stitch counts as one. So that really puts a three in here as well for a nice corner. And I'm just slip stitching to join in that first single crochet, then you can fasten off. And you can see I still have some yarn left. I have enough for sewing on buttons. And even if I wanted to go a little bit higher. I probably could have, but I think this, this looks great at the length it's at. And it's nice to be on the safe side of having some extra yarn rather than not having enough. So for a size nine, you may or may not have enough. You might be able to get away with one ball for a size nine, but I'm going to say go with um, extra just to be sure just to be on the safe side so this is what it's looking like so the next thing we're going to do is we want to 
weave in the ends, and then we're gonna sew on some buttons. I didn't specifically make buttonholes because I didn't want them to be too big that the button wouldn't end up holding. So you just want buttons really that you can fit through these holes. So these ones are about 32. Um, so you wanna be able to just pop them through the stitches and they should hold fairly tightly. As soon as I make skip a stitch to make a buttonhole with this large yarn, you'd really need a big button to make sure that A would stay closed. The other option would be just to sew it right that it's not functioning, but I think it's easier to get on and off if you have that it can open up. So all I do, not sure which buttons I'm gonna use. I may actually use, I might even use black for this one, but you just wanna space them. Just an example, the brown ones, you would just wanna space them out. And if you go taller, like you may decide that you need four buttons instead of only three buttons. This one here I have, you can see it's a little bit shorter. I put three buttons and they fit on there really nice. I have them in a little bit, but depending on if you need it to be a little bit looser. So let's say you find that a bit tight. You could always go closer to the edge to give your leg a little bit more room. Like this, but I need it a little bit snugger for my leg. So that's what's nice with not making the specific buttonhole. You can kind of play around with it to make sure it fits your leg properly. So I think I'm gonna go with black and I'm gonna go with four actually, because I made this one a little bit taller. I think that the four looks nice. Could get away with three, but I think I'm gonna do four because I have lots of buttons. So I'm gonna go with four. I'm gonna sew these on. So I'll need to find a smaller yarn needle. I'm not sure if this one will even go through. You need to make sure you have a yarn needle that will fit through those buttonholes. And then you could use the either this yarn to go through, or if you need to use like a worsted weight or some embroidery thread, you could sew them on with that as well. Okay, so this is the left boot. I've also worked up 14 rows for the left, I'm just finishing it off here. So I'm just gonna show you how we're gonna do the edging. So chain one and turn. And we're just gonna work across a single crochet in every stitch. Okay, so this is the left boot. I've also worked up 14 rows for the left. I'm just finishing it off here. So I'm just gonna show you how we're gonna do the edging. So chain one and turn. And we're just gonna work across a single crochet in every stitch. Okay, in the final stitch, I'm gonna add three single crochet and continue working down the edging. Again, you're just looking to evenly space your stitches. So if you've made the boot only 12 rows, you're gonna have less stitches than if you make it 14 rows. So I'm not gonna give you the exact number. I just want you to make sure that they're not pulling. Your stitches are just working down nice and even. This boot is really easy to customize, so that's why if you wanna, like you could use some more of this yarn and you could make it longer. You could make the boot area taller. What you just wanna take into consideration is if you have a larger calf, um, 
it may you may struggle to, to have it go up higher like if it it will stretch so it may stretch over your calf but you may want to consider doing more than 20 stitches around if you're going to go a little bit higher really depends like some people have thinner calves and other people have larger so when you start going higher you do get into more body type um, considerations so when I'm to the corner again I just like to put three in the corners because it just gives us a nice um, kind of 90 degree turn and you just keep going working up the edge and then because we've already worked the single crochet again across the top we just slip stitch when we get up there so when you get up to the last stitch here we're going to add two because the first one counts as one so then that's really three in this corner slip stitch to join fasten off and then we can weave in the ends okay so next you can sew on I'm just going to show you how this looks so you want to make sure that you get that this is how your slippers looking with your buttons you want to make sure that cable's right there in the center because you want to make sure when you go ahead and sew that you're going to be sewing it on nice and even and flat so you can pin this in place pin the heel piece and the toe piece and then it includes some yarn that you can use to sew on which is great so you're going to need the a smaller yarn needle to get through all of these pre-made holes so I, now i went up from underneath and i pulled what i'm hoping is enough yarn to work my way around i'll pull it back if i didn't pull through enough of the yarn just watch I've pinned these but I've pinned them down so I just have to be careful doing it this way that I'm not um, going to stab myself with them because they are popping through on that side and I am just sewing it on this way so I'm going up through the hole as I go Okay, so now I knotted this when I was finished and I'm going to weave those ends after the fact, but now I've pinned, started pinning the heel on as well. I'm going to just do the same thing. I like starting in here rather than out there just because the edges are going to get more wear. So it's good to have our knot. So make sure as you're doing this, of course, that you're grabbing the bottom of the... You just wanna pull so much yarn through that you think you're gonna need. You can always go this way with this yarn, like if you need to. We're just going underneath, grabbing some of the slipper and then popping up through the holes. It's just kind of fiddly work is all. It just, you kind of need to sit and just take your time. So 
So I'll just continue sewing that piece on as well. Okay, so I already put on my bottoms. I just have to weave the ends. When I go around, I just knot them well and then I weave. You can see I finished the right boot. It's completely finished. I have my suede bottoms sewn on. I have put my buttons. I ended up using, I have oatmeal, Lion Brand oatmeal in the worsted weight. So I just use that to sew on my buttons. So you can see how nice this looks. It's gonna be nice and durable with the bottoms. Of course, you don't have to add them on there. That's just an extra added touch. And then I also, here's my, here's my other boots. So these ones, I don't have uh, suede bottoms for them. And I use the wooden buttons. And then what I also did is added one of my tags just on the back, which I think is another nice, touch a nice personalized touch so I have my tags custom made by brick bubble so brickbubble.ca is her website so if you have a logo she could design a logo for you or you could send her the logo and she can create those and you can either get the the leather rivets to put on or you can also have her do them so that they have the holes for sewing so really whatever your preference is So this boot here, I would just find the center, the back, and then just put that right on there, just to personalize it. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly show you. What I like to do is, I like to start up here, and then I like to go down here, and then just make sure my other two buttons are spaced nicely. So you can just use a yarn needle, just make sure it goes through the button. And I'm using my oatmeal worsted weight yarn. My, my other boots, I was able to use the bulky yarn and it worked going through those buttons, but not every button that's gonna work. So then you can just knot your buttons on. can weave those ends or just trim them. And sometimes I'll just put them all on there even first before I knot them just to make sure that I don't need to change a placement on anything. Of course you can measure, but I just eyeball, eyeball it out to make sure they're even. Okay, so here are my finished slipper boots. This was such a fun, quick and easy project. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you can stay updated on new videos and tutorials and just make sure to tap that bell. So this project was really easy. It only took probably a few hours to make the slipper boots themselves. So you can easily whip these up in an evening, a great gift for a loved one or a friend, definitely something that people would love to receive and they keep your feet extra warm and cozy through the cool winter months.